When it comes to the story of the transfiguration, it's all about Jesus' power. Power! 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 Jesus Christ has power. Do you understand what that means? I get really excited sometimes talking about Jesus because I think we forget how powerful the gospel really is. Too many times we think about Jesus as the Lamb of God. You know, like when you were in second grade, you decorated a popsicle stick with cotton balls and you said, behold, the Lamb of God. Too many times we just, we know the stories and we just think, oh Jesus, he was a really nice guy. But in this story, I think maybe what was going on is that Jesus' followers were thinking, oh Jesus, you're just such a great guy. Everything is going super swell. Crowds are coming out and people really like you, Jesus. And now people really like us. And they were kind of getting comfortable for all of a sudden, Jesus says, hey, Peter, James, John, come here. And they go up on top of the mountain and well, bam! Jesus mega evolutions on them and shows them something they've never seen before. And they are just I love it too because at first J Peter is just like, hey Lord, it's a good thing that we're here so that we can build tents and we can stay here a while. You know, Peter's kind of comfortable with the situation, the fact that Jesus all of a sudden is transforming into mega evolution Jesus and there's Moses and Elijah on either side of him. Peter's kind of okay with this. But then there's a shadow that comes over the gang and a voice comes from the clouds and says, behold, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased Listen to him. And it's at that moment when God the Father comes down and says, this is my son. All of a sudden, they're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They're freaking out now. They're like, oh my gosh, they become afraid. I think this is us sometimes, right? We see Jesus and we're like, oh, he's cool. He's a nice guy. Things are going okay. And then maybe we see Jesus a little bit more. We go to church and a reading speaks to us or we hear the homily and it touches our heart or we hear a Christian song and we're like, oh my gosh, I'm playing ocean. I can dolo dry bones. And, and, and our faith goes to another level and we're kind of pumped and we're excited about this. Just like when Peter sees Jesus with Moses and Elijah and we're like, let's stay in this moment. Let's stay in this feeling. But then all of a sudden, God the Father comes down. Boom! This is my beloved son. And all of a sudden, we realize that Jesus isn't just here on his own, but Jesus comes with the Father. And it's at that point that we realize, in the face of God the Father, we are not worthy. See, too many times we think of Jesus as just a nice guy. When we realize that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that means he came to save us, which means we have need to be saved, which means we screwed up somewhere along the way. My brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you this week to think about the power of Jesus Christ. And when we see the power of Jesus Christ, like Peter, James, and John did, we only have two options. Either, yes, we believe that Jesus has power, he is our savior, or we don't. And we walk away, we turn away from Jesus. You can't have it both ways, my brothers and sisters. You can't see the power of Jesus and acknowledge him as your savior, while at the same time just treating him like some nice guy. I pray that when you hear the story of the transfiguration this weekend, you would make a decision. You would make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. You would make a decision to repent from all of that stuff that keeps you away from God the Father. Because we realize in the moment of the transfiguration when God the Father speaks, we realize that we are sinners in need of a savior. But then just like in the gospel, Jesus comes over to us and he says, get up. Do not be afraid. My brothers and sisters, this weekend, do not be afraid of Jesus Christ. Recognize that he alone has the power to fill the emptiness in our hearts. And it's in recognizing that Jesus is Lord and he has that power that is the first step in becoming a disciple. I pray that this weekend you would allow the story of the transfiguration to renew your commitment to Jesus Christ. Or maybe this is the first time that you recognize Jesus as Lord and Savior. I pray that this week some of you would have a revelation of the power of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit would lead you in a journey through this story to know more about this guy who took a few of his buddies to the mountaintop and was transfigured before them. To know more about who he is, why is he here, and why is he doing the things that he's doing. Can we really believe that Jesus said what he meant and meant what he said? Can we really believe that he is here so that we would not die but have life and live life abundantly? Peace.
And if you're interested in checking out more of my videos about weekly reflections on the gospel and other tips and tricks of how to live the life as a disciple of Jesus Christ, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you have any questions about your faith that you'd like me to answer, go ahead and use the comments below and I'll make a video just for you.